Hi there, today I want to talk about quantization, but specifically the auto quantization function in Cubase. Now, this function will most likely be in other recording software, but Cubase is my recording software of choice. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I personally went through a huge, massive learning curve when learning general music production using computers, let alone Cubase itself. And I struggled to find a YouTube channel that explained things in a simple and clear way. So that's what I try to do. I do my best to explain things without assuming you know all kinds of terminology that some on YouTube assume you know already. If you haven't done so already, then please do subscribe by hitting the red button and do let me know if there are any specific subjects you'd like me to cover in the comment section below. Now, a few weeks ago, and after using Cubase for around eight years, I discovered this auto quantization function. And to declare my glee, I posted a comment on a Facebook group. But within minutes, I had the usual Facebook group purists trying to tell me that quantization is the death of music and should never be used. But of course they didn't know what type of music I was talking about. And one group member said I should record this video and explain and demonstrate how it can be used and of course how it can save a huge amount of time. Well, a huge amount of my time anyway. So what is quantization in the context of digital music? Have you tried seeing what Wikipedia says? Well, it says, quantization is the studio software process of transforming performed musical notes, which may have some imprecision, due to expressive performance, to an underlying musical representation that eliminates the imprecision. The process results in notes being set on beats and on exact fractions of beats. You see, you know what that means. Now, trying to record to a metronome isn't as easy as it sounds, especially as you add more and more tracks to your composition. Now, if it's a relatively slow piece, then it's much easier. When recording orchestral music in general, quantization isn't really necessary, as the last thing you want is for such music to sound robotic in any way. In fact, in years gone by, use of any MIDI was just seen as a robotic sounding recording technique and should be avoided at all costs if you wanted your music to sound human. But there are times, like in more modern music, house music, hip hop, trance, orchestral trance, etc., when using tight quantization is vital. But I want to talk and show you in this video this automatic quantization function and how it can save a huge amount of time. Over the past two years, a great deal of my work has been recording backing tracks for clients. Sometimes they're full orchestral sounding tracks and other times some very simple piano only type backings. Then a couple of weeks ago, a client asks asked for a simple piano recording, as he put it, of the song The Twelve Days of Christmas. Now, for those of you that know the song, it goes on and on and involves a huge amount of counting. So let's take a look at a simple example of that song and how quantization can help. Okay, so now in this example, uh, like I said earlier, my client is wanting a simple piano bass recording. So I'm not going to try and put a rhythm track or a drum track together. I'm just going to use the piano. Now, for those of you that know the song, like I said, it involves a lot of counting and does go on a fair bit. So my plan was to try and start it quite simple and then make the piano recording a little bit more elaborate as we work along. So um, this, is, this is how I went about it and how I found this function, which, which helps enormously. You can see on the screen here, I've set up three piano tracks to start with um, and for those that are interested I'm actually using the um, Addictive Keys Studio Grand which I find is my my staple piano really. Um, it's got um, lots of mic positions you can do lots of um, um, tweaking of the sound 
um, um, EQ in pitch, filters, all kinds of volumes, volumes for pedal, um, etc, etc, and has quite a good um, effects processor as well. Anyway, that's Addictive Key Studio Grand. Now, before I go any further, I just want to explain something that I currently have a problem with my setup and, it, and I'm working through a process of elimination to find out exactly what it is. So while I'm doing this demonstration, it might kick in. All of a sudden, no matter what instrument I'm using, um, a, a, um, a pitch change MIDI message will get sent to Cubase. And so therefore some tracks will go out of tune. So like I say, while I'm recording this, I hope it won't happen. But if it does happen, then perhaps someone out there will have an idea as to exactly what it is. Um, I know it's not my pedal. I know it's not uh, the software. Um, I know it's not the um, uh, MIDI cable that goes from my keyboard to the software. It could be the keyboard itself. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to the subject in hand. Okay, so um, without using any um, specific um, quantization function whatsoever, let me play a few verses of um, the accompaniment side of um, uh, 12 Days of Christmas. So we'll put a little introduction in it. help if I started recording to start with wouldn't it so let's start at part two let's go back okay I've set the metronome to about 100 bpm um, which is more than enough to give me enough time to be sight reading it and enough time to do some perhaps more fancy things later down the line so I'm going to start with just putting a simple um, accompaniment track together so let's just play a few verses of that here we go Okay, that's relatively straightforward. And again, some of you might be in front of me and think, hang on a minute, there's some bars that's in 3-4 there, but your metronome's in 4-4. It just got too complicated with the song that I'm using to try and plan exactly when those 3-4 bars are going to come in. So I tend to play over the beat. Don't worry about that. That's not the purpose of this video. If we now look at what I have just recorded in a little bit more detail, let's blow that up. Um, we can see though that although if I play this back it sounds fine it sounds human um, dare I say it um, but if we look much closer we'll see that actually some of these chords are not directly on the beat and to be honest that's not a problem because that's the humanization side of, of um, um, playing, um, dare I say, electronic music? No, computer based software, uh, uh, computer based music. That is fine. Now, if we now move to uh, the second track, what I'll do is I'm going to try and put a little bit more fullness to what I was playing before. We'll add a little bit more of a melody. Um, uh, and so a second track and this was used more in the final recording when I got towards the end of the song and it had to be much more fuller but still piano only so let's have a go and see what we can do And again, if we look much closer at what I've just put in, we will see that, yeah, even that last chord's not quite on the beat. Um, yeah, those four chords there, not quite on the beat, but it's still kind of sounding human. Let's just um, play both tracks together and let's see what it's sounding like. Now, 
now already. We can hear that it's not quite together. Just listen to that phrase again. You see what I mean? So multi-track recording, as accurate as you try to play it when you play it live, isn't always quite that simple. Now, this would multiply even more if I was to add a third track. So what's the solution around this? Well, what you could do, you could go back to the grid um, and you could start quantizing it. Yeah, okay, that's fine, that'll be fine. But you don't need to do that. Right, let's scratch that all together. Let's delete um, that track and that track. And this time I will have looked at the music and think, well, it's not going to go any quicker than an eighth note or a quaver, as we say here in, in, in the UK. Um, and so it, I have set the quantization um, scale to an eighth of a note, as you can see up there. But the magic button that, I, that this video is all about is right down in the bottom left hand corner here called automatic MIDI recording quantize. If you hit that, it will turn uh, yellow uh, or orange, as you can see there. Now this time I'm going to play exactly the same again. Let's see what happens. closer to that and this time you will see that no matter how more involved that accompaniment was every quaver is bang on line okay so we can expect it to play exactly bang on line that's fine but if I do it might sound a little bit on the robotic side let's listen If it was a piano solo, it might be a little bit unhuman, but it's not. It's a backing track for um, singers to sing along to remember. Now, however, if we go to track number two, we could be a little bit more involved than we were before. Let's see what happens this time. Okay, let's look a little bit closer to that and let's examine exactly what I did there. Now we can see like, as before, everything is bang on the beat. The big drawback to this, however, is what I did on that final chord. The way it's recorded is, but what I actually played was, in other words, I spread the chord. But if you are doing multiple um, um, tracks um, on piano recordings, let's speed that up a little bit, let's take it up to 120, might sound a little bit more in the way it's supposed to be. aside, auto quantization. Cubase is a massive software platform, unlike other similar platforms, whether it be for music or music notation or even graphics, we only tend to use a small proportion of what the software can actually do. 
This isn't helped by the so-called manuals that software developers provide nowadays with their software. They constantly refer to terminology that many may not understand to start with. If you have a requirement to do something specific in Cubase but get frustrated that you can't find or understand the answer, then do let me know in the comments box below or email me directly if you wish at musicdirectoronline at gmail.com and I'll try and put a short and easy to understand video together to get you even more musically creative. Hope this has been useful. See you next time.